Can you talk to me about CIA disguises? No, they're good. Really? Yeah, there's there's some great books on this. Um, there's there's a couple former CIA disguise techs, um, I, uh, uh, who've written books on on that. And, and and in fact, you know, we would what the CIA did. Um, again, this is all out in public. Is they actually went and and worked with Hollywood. Oh really? Um, yeah. So some of the top Hollywood, uh, you know, kind of uh, disguise uh, or or you know makeup artists and, and technicians. And so yeah, because you know ultimately the idea is not to get caught. And so it's it's pretty cool. So what, what was your disguise? Are you allowed to tell me? I mean, I I, I have a goatee now. It's kind, of, it's kind of hard, but you can put a wig on, must fake mustache, stuff like that. It's the idea of, of you know people glancing at you and not knowing who you are. And you're trying to look like, like someone else, Iraqi or Afghan or whatever. I, I mean, you know, the, one of the one of the coolest things, uh, and I talk about in the book, is how how successful female uh, operations officers mm-hmm. are in the Arab world because. When out in the street, you can be fully covered. They can wear a naqib or yep. a burqa. It's or unbelievable. Something. I mean, that's just like so. The, what the Arab world has done for the the world of espionage is give us an advantage Hilarious. because women are covered. Ah, uh, so Sharia is actually helping. It's helping. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, actually, I want to I want to talk about that also because that's crazy. No, I'm I'm very much uh, following kind of the protests uh, in Iran, which is extraordinary. Mm-hmm. You know, the, uh, these are you know it's kind of a, uh, you know ground roots. Um, uh, female protesters, you know, against uh, uh, against the hijab, against the idea of being covered. Right. Um, but but again, but, but but just that's you know kind of an amusing note that you know the the idea of we, we could send female case officers out fully covered, and and they would go. You, you call it going black. Can I give you some CIA advice? Oh sure. You could also send out male case officers. Also put them in an akib. Could. Like I mean, they might be like six three, but like it's a little weird. But you could stop, yeah. Like could, why put could. on the Groucho Marx mustache? So, when so you here's just... here's a great story, and again, I'm I'm stealing it from the book. Is uh, but uh, we had a female, a female case officer uh, in the Middle East, and she was out on a surveillance detection route, and she was actually seen, um, which is unusual because you 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 know for whatever reason, and we had a penetration of that um, of that of that government, and we received a report from an agent saying that this female from the U.S. Embassy was seen on definitely on an operational act, but it gets better because they said, and because again, this, this is a, a, a very misogynistic, you know, male dominated society. They said, well, she can't be a spy because a girl can't be a spy. Hilarious. So we're going to suspect and put surveillance on her husband who was, uh, who was also a, a member at the embassy. And, and, the, and of course he hadn't done anything. Yeah. She got caught and she never had surveillance the rest of the tour. He did. And he's like, what the fuck? What did I do? That's so funny. But we laughed at that because, again, we, and what is that? why is that important? Because what we're doing is trying to find a way to kind of beat our adversary. Right. And if they had that kind of, you know, they were a misogynistic, male-dominated um, view of women, horrible. Mm-hmm. But for us, actually kind of good. Right. Because we're going to beat you every time on that. And they're completely unassuming. And so, it, you know, it really it, it worked out. I love that story because, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, what's the role of female operations officers? And right. I'm like, well, they're really fucking good. And in fact, in the Middle East, they're better than men. Are there more now than there were yeah, 20 sure. years ago? Yep. And is there like a concerted effort to be like, yes. oh, we should yeah. get more women? So look, the CIA, just like everything else in, in kind of in life and in, in society, you know, was was certainly racked by, um, uh, you know, sexism. Sure. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, uh, and well, certainly, uh, you know, years ago, racism too. But but there there was a there was definitely an absence of of you know both minority and female operations officers, and it's just in a, in, a, in a in the director of operations, which was male dominated for a long time. We've gotten much better at it. We're not where we need to be. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I really tried at the end of my career was to 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 put as many um, uh, really qualified you know female and minority officers in management positions because because again it's it's the idea it's the, it, it, it's right for. For all those reasons, you think it's right. It's also the best athlete approach too, because you know, again, we're going to win yeah. on the streets. I mean, we had, I, we once had a, again, if you know the Middle East, um, I don't. Uh, South Asians, and but but in, in essence, you know, there's a huge community of Filipinos in the Middle East who are that's part of the servant class. Oh, really? You know, rich Gulf Arabs will hire Filipinos as as hmm. their servants. We had a Filipino American CIA case officer. This fucker could go everywhere because the the, the host country would would never suspect that what they considered part of the servant class was actually a spy. And this CIA officer was could could go could literally walk into the probably, you know, the 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 uh, intelligence service headquarters of that country and walk around because they thought he was a street sweeper. Crazy. So like so, again, those... that's the, so what I'm saying is that's the best athlete approach. And that's mm-hmm. why we need a you know a really diverse cadre of operations officers. Right. And you're able to exploit like class or racial Absolutely. disparities yep. in the country and be like, hey, you're yeah. you think that Filipinos are stupid. Yeah. Watch, we're gonna put this genius guy to go in there yep. and he's gonna So that and that even even with myself who, you know, looks pretty white. Um, but I, I, but I would I was, say you look Greek. Uh, well, I'm Greek, but I, so that's I would say thing. swarthy, swarthy. Right? <laughs> so, but as a, but as a as a Greek American, and my wife, who is a uh, agency officer as well, is a, is a Lebanese mm-hmm. uh, uh, background. 
Um, there were plenty of times where people knew we were affiliated with the U.S. Embassy, no doubt. But they literally would say, well, hey, you know, you know, uh, your wife's Leb- uh, Lebanese, you're Greek, you're kind of one of us. This is in the Arab world. Ah. And so you know, use that to your advantage. Interesting. Um, you know, absolutely. And so, um, but I think there's, there's, you know, there's, we still have a long way to go in terms of, uh, uh, you know, ensuring that there's, um, uh, you know, kind of the right mix of, of, of diversity at the agency, but it's gotten so much better. Over Can the you years. talk to me about honeypots? Yeah. So we don't do that. Um, the Russians do it. Other countries. America does America do it. Is, so a honeypot operation is essentially, you know, using sex to recruit somebody. Mm-hmm. Which um, I would love to do. If that's you, right. If as you a know, here, yeah. As a role. There you go. Okay. I'm going to send you off <laughs> into, into Russian. There's, Russian women are beautiful. So, um, women, no. whoever really, whatever but, it takes to protect our country. There you go. Okay? It's, it's out of patriotism. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tell but, my wife. But essentially, honeypots are used, and the other countries have used this very successfully uh, for us, uh, against us. Um, we don't use it because I, I never, and the CIA just, it just doesn't believe that that's a way to actually, it's coercive. That's not a way to recruit somebody. You have to recruit someone based on motivations that are a little more um, uh, uh, kind of sincere than kind of throwing a, uh, a female or a male at someone. Hmm. Um, and, and so one of the things that we would tell people is, you know, if you go off to, um, you know, there's, there's famous uh, uh, stories of, uh, you know, of whether it's in Lebanon where the women are beautiful or Russia when the women are beautiful. Well, if you're rolling out as a male who's kind of a three and all of a sudden you got a nine or a 10 at a bar acting, you know, very friendly towards you, Little. you got to think about Un- uh-huh. Unless you have had this kind of incredible transformation over your three or four beers, um, uh, they're there for a different reasons. So you got to be super careful. But uh, but other countries definitely do it, and they do it successfully. We just don't do it because I think ethically and morally, we don't. We, Americans are very puritanical about sex. Mm. Um, Is that something they they train for? Yeah, they do. And so so in in the Soviet Union, the KGB used to have a school. There's a great um, there's a great book, and uh, I think it's called Red Sparrow, and it was made into a movie. Um, but the KGB used to have a school that actually would train female KGB officers. Um, and so it's, I mean, it, it, there's, there's also like ethical stuff here. That's almost, it's not prostitution, but it's prostituting themselves right. to, to compromise, you know, a NATO official um, and then eventually coercively recruit them. But I just think we don't do it for those, those kind of ethical reasons, but also it's not a good way to, to get your hooks into someone. What about uh, like information? Yeah, like, it just, just doesn't, it's not, it's not the, you know, it, it, cause it doesn't last. Uh, hmm. So you want a recruitment operation to last. Uh, um, it's a lot of time and money. And if it's like a two night thing, but it's, uh, it's also coercive, you know, so you right. know, it's in, in the sense of you're forcing someone to do something they don't want to do. A great recruitment is when the, 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 the agent candidate, the Russian, Iranian, Chinese official is said, you know, says to you, you almost, you, you know, if you recruit someone and it's going well, they recruit, they've recruited themselves mm-hmm. because they're like, you know what? You've taught me so much about the greatness of America and I've experienced this and, and I know I've helped you, you know, um, with some reports and you've given me some information cause you know, my kid is sick mm-hmm. and, and you see where I'm going on this yeah, and, of course. or, or, you know, that was a really fun trip. We took to Qatar for the, uh, for the, the world, world cup. cup. I remember that. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, and so, so they're like, you know what? I, I want, I want to do this. Uh, not that I'm going to be coerced in doing something. So anything like blackmail, that or, does, you know, other countries do it. We don't. Right. And is there uh, counter training for that? Like, are we teaching? Yeah. So US if, if you're, if you're like, a freaking gnarly, ugly dude, just and be like some chick who's a 10 comes up to you right. like you know same thing on the other side of right if you're you know if you're not the greatest looking female and and you know someone who looks like uh i don't know you know brad pitt comes up to you you got to think twice about that and they coach you on that and they're like hey don't fall for it yeah absolutely or like yeah, ask these questions yeah especially when you go to places which is known to have kind of i'm gonna say this sounds stupid but you know, you know really good looking people mm-hmm. um and you know that service does that oh um, wild yeah so so uh so it's just it's a uh, it's one of those things but uh uh you got to be kind of careful of it, and and I think that you know that's um, you, know, you look at Americans who have been so so it's been used successfully against the United States. There there are plenty of American uh, U.S. government officials who have fallen for these things. Oh really? Yep. Do you think it still happens? Yeah, sure. Oh really? Absolutely. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, what's the I mean, so again? You know, so here, okay, this is a perfect, a perfect yeah. time to, to say this. So so, so this, what's the second oldest profession? Second oldest profession is spying. espionage. What's espionage. the first oldest the, prostitution? Prostitution. So sex is a huge allure in life. Yeah, and so so other countries have definitely used that. Mm-hmm. Do you know any examples that have happened in U.S. history? Oh, I got it. I mean, there's there's certainly I, I have to, I'd have to go back and look at kind yeah. of spy scandals, but you could you could find that you know, right uh, pretty easily where people were, um, you know, essentially kind of duped. Interesting. And then it's you know it ultimately all these things. It, it's sad in the end because. You know, uh, you know, and and this is going to sound terrible, but you know, if someone's spying for ideology, okay, there, there's there's some nobility there, I suppose. Mm-hmm. I mean, so if somehow 
you know, an American. Uh, I mean, you look back to kind of the the, the, the old kind of British spy rings, mm-hmm. um, where where these were where these were British government officials and the British intelligence service who actually were were secret communists. You kind of understand, uh, and they were and, and some were caught, and then some fled to Moscow. But they were doing it because they believed in something. If you have a you know a, a poor you know I don't know it's an American secretary at the U.S. embassy somewhere who then has this romance with her with someone who is the most you know beautiful man she's ever met. Um, ultimately she gets caught for spying, you know, this is devastating because she's going to go to jail forever, but also it's kind of, she's, she's broken personally. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's just that huge betrayal there. And so, right. Now, pretty now, 